Welcome, today we're going to be taking apart an ASUS Q325U. This is a full HD convertible touchscreen uh, two-in-one laptop. And to start we're going to need a small Torx head bit. This is a T5. And then uh, just for your information the display we're going to leave complete. Um, as is most, most touch screens, uh, it's going to be kind of a pain to take apart uh, without breaking things. So, But we're going to take apart the uh, main part of the chassis. And to start, we're going to go ahead and just flip it over and remove all of these Torx screws. All right, once we have all those screws out, we're gonna go ahead and just work the bottom case up off the rest of the palm rest assembly. So the easiest way I found is to sometimes just use the little hinge part right here um, to get the bottom case started. Because um, a lot of times the bottom case, especially on the real nice ones, is kind of recessed into the palm rest. So it just it tends to give you a little bit of leverage to kind of pop that up uh, just using the hinge. And on the back, it looks like we've started uh, kind of opening it there. So we'll go ahead and finish going around the perimeter. Oop, this one looks like it's ready to pop off. So we'll take a look at the inside there. So it just has the, um, the little plastic snaps around the outside and then there's one in the center as well, kind of near the center. So if your bottom case doesn't feel like it wants to pop up after you've removed those screws, it's just this part right here. Uh, so don't worry about lifting up on it and breaking something because that's the only thing that's holding it attached is that little uh, catch right there in the center. So now we have a look at the inside of the laptop and we have a pretty big battery. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and use a small Phillips bit now. And I think this will be a one or a 1.5. There we go. So I'm using a 1.5 millimeter Phillips. And from what I can tell, um, this should allow us to uh, disassemble the rest of the laptop. definitely quite a battery. The thing is, it's pretty large, but it's also just flat. And you can tell that as far as the internals go, the battery takes up more than 50% of the inside of the laptop. And it looks like we got a little bit of tape here for the, looks like maybe the video cable. So we'll go ahead and peel that off of the battery. All right, so it looks we have uh, just a couple more tiny screws. These might actually be a smaller Phillips. Um, no. 1.5 will work just fine for those. And then we're just gonna pop that connector up and off with our fingernail. Oops, looks like we have one more screw for the battery. That's why it's a good idea just to kind of wiggle something before you actually pull it up to remove it. That way, if it's still, there's a fastener or something that you forgot, um, you'll be able to tell before you break anything. All right, so we got that battery out. Uh, it looks like the uh, side power button and looks like a, maybe the charge port um, is part partially buried under the hinge, so we're gonna wait on that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and remove the NVMe SSD. All right, that one's gonna be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna switch to a 2.0, so we don't strip that fastener. So 
once you get that um, get that screw out then you can pull the SSD out actually this is a SATA M2 SSD you can tell by the uh, two notches there so it's just a slightly different type of SSD All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, the fan and heat sink here. We'll go ahead and do that next. So it looks like the heat sink is maybe just kind of a cover plate. So we'll go ahead and remove the screws for the heat sink. If you're planning on reinstalling the heat sink, you're gonna to wanna to tighten it down in the order that's labeled right here. So it'll be one, two, three, four. Uh, this allows the heat sink thermal paste to kind of spread evenly and to for the heat sink to have kind of a uniform pressure. All right, so we got those screws out for the heat sink. Oh, it looks like one more right here. So that one should be the last one. Should be stamp number five. And it looks like we have some more tape. So we'll go ahead and just peel that back from the heat sink. And we have some more tape under the tape. We'll go ahead and peel that back as well. And it looks like it's for the uh, video cable, so just when you pull that back, just be careful that you don't kind of tug on it after it releases from the heat sink. All right, we'll give it a little more of a wiggle. Looks like this is actually part of it. So we got one more screw at the bottom. Okay. So it definitely feels like it's kind of attached with some adhesive. So we'll just go ahead and remove those fan screws and pull it out as an assembly. And the fan connector is really tiny, so you're gonna wanna try to use some kind of precision tool to get that out if you can. These little connectors can kind of be a pain. All right, so we'll just use, I'm gonna use a small flat bit. And then we'll just work it from one side and then push it in from the other side back and forth until we get that out. You'll be tempted to kind of pull on the wires. Sometimes you can get away with that, but I recommend against um, tugging on the cable to that. You never know how well they're built. Okay, so we got the fan and heat sink out and it's just a little bit of glue here on top of the cooling fan to kind of connect it to that heat sink. So we'll just go ahead and leave it as an assembly for now, but if you need to separate it, it's just a little bit of glue right there. All right. So now I think we can go ahead and work on removing that motherboard. And we'll switch back to the two. And we'll go ahead and disconnect all of the cables that are still attached to the motherboard and then we can remove the screws. So those are going to be a little bit small. So I'll just stay with the 1.5 Phillips. All right, same as before, we'll just go ahead and pop that little uh, connector up and off after we've removed the screws. Sometimes there's a little bit of adhesive under there as well, but you should be able to just pop it straight up and off. And the keyboard ribbon, we're gonna flip up on that little retainer and then slide that ribbon out. And then we'll flip it back down, keep it safe. And same for the touchpad. We just got that one little connector right there. Flip it up, pull the ribbon out, and push it back down. 
Uh, this type of connector is just going to come straight up and off, so we're going to use a small tool underneath and push up on it until it disengages from the motherboard. It looks like there's another tiny connector here. So same deal, we'll flip up and flip back down after we pull the ribbon out. All right, so a little Wi-Fi card here. Uh, has two antennas, you just kind of flick those up and off with your fingernail. All right. So it looks like uh, we just got another small ribbon right here. And it has a, a little bit of a groove in it to where you can get your thumb or fingernail on it. And that'll allow you to pull it free from the motherboard. And it looks like it's a little bit trapped underneath that screw, so... I'll just go ahead and remove the screw before I try to pull that cable away from it. There we go. All right, and then for the display assembly, this type of connector has a little bar that goes around the rest of the connector. So we're gonna flip that up. And then we can use that little bar to pull that video cable out. All right, so as you can see from the LCD, we just have the two cables and now we are able to remove that LCD if we want just by removing these hinge screws. Um, we'll go ahead and do that on the next step, but for now we're gonna remove the motherboard. So to kill two birds with one stone at this step, if you're gonna remove the display assembly, I would open it up all the way, like so. And this way, once you remove those screws, uh, you should be able to just separate the display assembly instead of having to kind of open it to clear those hinges. And the hinge screws are a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna switch back to a two millimeter Phillips. And it does look like uh, the motherboard is partially retained by those hinge screws. And the in-out board over here is also um, underneath the hinge screws, so we're gonna separate the display at this point just to give us access to removing the rest of the stuff we need to get off of the palm rest. All right. So after we get these six screws out, then we'll just have a bare palm rest. And one thing I'm noticing is also that the RAM is not upgradable on this laptop. So if you're planning a RAM upgrade, um, there's no expansion slot. It's all integrated onto the motherboard. So what you have is what you have. All right, so now we can separate that display assembly and remove it from the palm rest assembly. All right, so going back to the motherboard, um, we're just gonna make sure that we've taken out all the screws. I do not see any more screws on the motherboard. So we're just gonna kinda gently lift it up from the inside. Um, often what you can see is ports on the motherboard will be sticking through the palm rest, so you never wanna lift from the outside of the motherboard because um, it can damage these ports. So once we have the inside, we'll just lift it up and we'll slowly turn it over and make sure there's no more ribbons or anything connected to it. And that is how you remove the tiny little motherboard. All right, so we'll go back to the other side and it looks like for this little in-out board, uh, we got one ribbon connection, a uh, small one right here and then it looks like the actual connector for the in board is on the bottom. So we'll just go ahead and remove the other screws. And then with this type of connector, it's the same as on the motherboard. We'll just flip up that little outside uh, retainer bar. And then we'll carefully 
pull this ribbon from the in out board and fold it back down. Looks like there's another screw kind of buried under the tape over here at the top. All right, so once you get those few screws out and disconnect the little ribbon here, you should be able to remove the, looks like the little charger board. All right, so from what we can see, the uh, looks like the keyboard may be integrated. I don't want to pull uh, the little back light cover off. Um, but the touchpad is definitely replaceable. It's just a few screws here at the top. Um, speakers are just kind of held on by some adhesive and grommets. And don't know. It's hard to tell if this is removable or not. Okay. So I just peeked under the backlight there. It looks like this type of motherboard is replaceable because I see tons of little tiny, tiny screws. So it does look like you'll be able to swap out your keyboard if necessary. Just plan on um, much like the Max having, you know, dozens and dozens of screws kind of threaded throughout it. And it looks like the Wi-Fi antennas are just kind of held on by some adhesive. And that is basically it. Um, it looks like the little fingerprint reader here on the side. So that's uh, how you disassemble the little Asus Q325U uh, two-in-one convertible touchscreen laptop. And if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.